Hello everyone and welcome back to part three of this great wheel debate. I'm Henry Wildberry and on today's video we are going to pick up where we left off. We are going to go out and perform an experiment where we look at 650B by 48 versus 700C by 25 millimeter wide road tires by testing these two tires on two separate paved courses. One course will be coarse and the other will be smooth. Now the purpose of this experiment is to see if we can determine whether there is a magnitude of difference between the speed of these two different wheel and tire combinations. I'll just show you this surface. This is some sort of a chip seal. Uh, I'm gonna show you down here so you can get a better view. Hopefully this camera will make it clear. I'm gonna stick my hand down so you can get a sense of it. But here's the chip seal and you've got little bits of gravel. So it's a pretty rough So it's a it's a pretty rough pretty rough surface. Now the math that we performed back when we first started this series suggests that actually the wider tire may roll faster. However, I wasn't able to perform this experiment then because I didn't have a bike that was capable of fitting such a wide tire. That has now changed and over the past few years I've had a custom made steel bike that can fit 650B by 48 millimeter wide tires and so now we are able to do this experiment. There is a common perception out there that narrow tires at higher pressure are faster than wider tires at lower pressure but some folks such as myself have begun to wonder whether our perception is close to reality. Jan Hein from Bicycle Quarterly has been studying this issue for a very long time and has performed a few tests that have shown that the wider tires are actually faster than the narrow tires. Now anyone who has had the opportunity to ride a bike with tires this wide and compared them to narrow tires will find it somewhat hard to believe that that is true. It's often the case when you ride a wide tire at low pressure, it feels sluggish, it feels slower. So could these tests actually be accurate? With that, today I'm going to perform a pseudoscientific experiment and see if I can determine if there is any meaningful conclusions. I do have a few disclaimers before we begin. I will be using products that I've purchased myself. I do not have exact tires in both of these sizes. I will be using a Panaracer Parimoto tire on the front with a tube and a Gravel King tire on the rear that is set up tubeless. Unfortunately, I cut my other Panaracer tire when I was doing the review video for those tires and so I no longer have it. So I'm going to have to make use with this and then with the 700 by 25 I'm going to be using a gator skin and the wheel that I will be using is similar box section to this except this wheel has 28 spokes and the 700 C wheel will have 36 spokes. So it is a little bit heavier and so we will be introducing some error as a result of that. In order to accommodate a 700C wheel on the 650B bike, I needed to find a second pair of short reach brake calipers. We went over to the uh, community bikes, these really nice people over here, where they sell a whole bunch of used bike parts. This is a great resource for anyone out there that has a vintage bike, they're trying to restore it, keep it running. Go to your local community bikes and uh, you can find things like this. There was a whole box full of them and uh, they're really nice. They let me pick through. So, Okay, well they fit, but there is one slight problem here and that is that the fender, uh, we're gonna have to take the fenders off in order to do, to do this experiment. The brakes actually fit, um, and I've got it in the straddle cable here, and I'm able to get some pretty good braking power on these on these brakes. Now this is the 700C wheel, 
So what we need to do is, uh, the last thing we need to do to make this work is I need to make some springs. Unfortunately, the springs that that come on the, the Weinman style are a little different. I think we've got it figured out now. I what I ended up doing is I took a let's see I took a basically I took a piece of a hose clamp here. These are those rubber grommeted style hose clamps. I just cut a piece out and I made a little a little hook out of it. It's kind of a soft metal so it bends pretty well. And I made a little hook. I mounted it to the bolt that holds the brake pad on. Uh, you can see the hose clamp works. I've got the spring behind it. So this is going to work just for temporary. And I didn't have to adjust the hanger. So when I swap back to the other brakes, I'll be able to do that. Swap back and forth really quickly just by pulling these off. Let me explain how I'm going to set up this experiment. So both wheels and tires will be compared using the same bike. The wheels will be switched after each test run and I will be wearing a heart rate monitor to ensure consistent effort throughout the duration of each time section. I've chosen to ride at 135 beats per minute because this is the heart rate at which I can repeat multiple efforts without significant fatigue. It also represents a heart rate zone two and this is the effort which best matches the all day endurance pace. The course for this test will consist of two five minute timed segments. The first time segment will be on a rough chip seal asphalt and the second segment will be on a smooth highway. The test will begin after an approximate 10 minute warm up, and once both time sections are completed, the wheels will be swapped and the test will repeat with the other wheel set. The number of times the test will be performed is based on the conditions and how I feel, but the more we repeat the test, the more data we will have to compare. Also, I should mention with the 700 by 25s, I was running it at 80 PSI front and back. And here on the 650Bs, we're running 30 PSI front and back. So for this test, we put the 650B by 48 Gravel King tires. We're running the, these are set up tubeless for the rear bike tire. On the front, we have the Pana Racer Parimoto. So we just finished up our first set of tests. We did one with the 700C, one with the 650B. I'm done now and I have to say, although I'm a little hesitant to report these results right now, because of the wind, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna look at these numbers and then I think I'm gonna wait and repeat this test again, either early in the morning when there's no wind or really late in the evening when there's no wind, either way. But I will say the results are really interesting so far, so stay tuned. All right, welcome back to day two of this pseudo-scientific study of the 650B versus 700C wheel size. So last night I ran one test and now today I'm gonna to see how many more I can do. It was a little windy last night, as you can see. Uh, the wind has dropped way down. There's I don't feel any breeze at all. So yesterday the trees were, you know, the trees were really blowing, but today they're not. So anyway, I'm gonna hop on. Yesterday I started with the 700 C's and today I think what I'll do is I'm gonna start off with the 650 B's. So we'll switch rolls. I've got my heart rate monitor on. I'm gonna get ready to go here, do the first test. I think it's gonna take about 30 minutes to do each one. I'm gonna try to get as many as I can before the wind picks up. All right, just finished the first section today, this morning. This is the rough section. And uh, my time was four minutes and 24 seconds. I think last night on the rough section, I was right around 420. So I'm a little slower, but I think that has to do with probably the wind. And uh, we'll see. Uh, perhaps, well, we'll just see. Now I'm gonna go do the smooth section, swap the wheels, and repeat.
Okay, just finished the uh, first of the smooth pavement sections and this time I really focused as best I could to watch that heart rate number and try to keep it as close to 135 as possible. Okay, so I'm rolling over here to the start of the rough section on the 700C by 25s. And one of the things that I think is most interesting about doing this test is feeling the difference between the two tires. Being able to tr actually switch them and feel the difference immediately. I think that's probably one of the Probably one of the most interesting parts of doing this test. All right, finished the second rough section test today on the 650B by 48s, and the time was four minutes, 16 seconds. So that is uh, eight seconds faster than the first test. So I do think I'm getting better at doing the test, and the wind is also starting to pick up again. So I think that's having an effect on the results. Okay, just finished the second uh, smooth test with the 650Bs and the time was five minutes and one second. So about one second faster than the 700C. So let's go swap the wheels and do it one more time and then we're done. Just finished test two today, which is the rough surface 700 by 25. And it is really weird that my time was 426 this time. And uh, I don't know what to think of all this. This is very interesting. I mean, the bike feels faster on 700. It absolutely feels faster. But the numbers don't seem to indicate that. Okay, well, the final test for today will be going back and doing the smooth section. So that's the last test. Let's go do it. Here is the data. So, um, first of all, let me explain this table. This is the results of the test. And I've plugged in all the numbers that I picked out of Strava for each of these segments. So over here on the left-hand side of this column, we have just day one and day two. So this was day one. This was in the afternoon when it was windy and then day two was in the, the following morning when it was a lot calmer, there was less wind. So in the beginning of the test on day one, I started off with the 700C tires and I rode, did a warm up and then rode over and did the rough course first. I turned around and then I did the smooth course. So I've organized these so that we can see comparisons back to back between the rough course and the smooth course, but Remember, the, 700, the smooth test was done immediately following the rough. Okay, so let's look at some of this data here. So on the first section of rough pavement with the 700 C wheels, my time was four minutes and 28 seconds. I had an average speed of 18.8 .8 miles per hour and an average heart rate of 135. This was my target heart rate for the entire duration. And over here, this is the max heart rate this is the number I pulled out of Strava. So it, heart rate fluctuated, and this particular time I had a max heart rate that spiked a little bit. Uh, it's, this is sort of like an instantaneous data point. But the average heart rate was 135. Then uh, when I came back after the first test, switched the wheels and did the 650B rough, I had a time of four minutes and 22 seconds. So I was six seconds faster my average speed was 19.3 miles an hour. I had a slightly lower average heart rate and a slightly lower peak heart rate. Um, so this was my first trial doing this. So I think the heart rate numbers as we will go down through will get more and more consistent as I got better at the test, got better at performing the test. So that was the rough pavement. On the smooth pavement, the 700 C's took a time of five minutes and two seconds for an average speed of 18.6 miles an hour, an average heart rate of 133, and a peak heart rate of 138. 
with the 650Bs, I averaged four minutes, well averaged, I timed four minutes and 57 seconds, which was uh, five seconds faster. My average speed was a little bit faster again at 19.1 miles an hour. Average heart rate, 133, and a max heart rate of 139. So again, uh, the 650B turned out to be a little bit faster. Not being convinced by this, I decided there could be a, the wind could be a contributor, so I went home and decided I would repeat this study the next morning when it was calm. When I got back out there the next day, I first started with the 650B tires, figuring that since I started with 700C, maybe by reversing this, I might perform a little better since I would be, you know, theoretically fresher. Uh, starting however I may not have been as warmed up either so anyhow I reversed the start that way I could just see if there was any difference in the numbers by starting with one wheel versus the other and uh, for the first run on the rough surface on the 650 B tires this time my time was 4 minutes 24 seconds average speed was 19.2 miles an hour uh, heart rate 134 with the max heart rate of 142 with the 700 C's on the very first test, I had a time of 429, 18.9 miles per hour, and a heart rate of 136, and a max heart rate of 141. So again, um, repeated this on the smooth surface. I got five minutes and two seconds with the 650 B's at an average speed of 18.7, an average heart rate of 135, and a max of 142. And then on the 700 C, I got a little, again, three seconds slower. So we go down, I repeated the test once more for each rough, for each surface, and in all cases, the 650B tires did turn out to be slightly faster at this heart rate zone. One of the things that I found really interesting about the results of this study is that while I was riding the bike, I felt that the 650Bs would always be slower, even though I had already previously tested it. It just felt like I was getting slower each time. And then to see these numbers, for example, the third time I rode the rough surface, my speed was actually quite a bit faster here, 19.9 average at 133 beats per minute, which really surprised me because then when I followed up that, the last time with the 700 C's, uh, I had a time of four minutes and 28 with an average of 18.8. So almost, so a little over a mile an hour average slower. And my heart rate here was starting to creep up a little bit in order to perform that way. So I do notice there's a quite a bit difference on the rough surface. The gap between the average speeds is a lot different, a lot higher on the rough surface versus the smooth. On the smooth surface, they're much closer. So now that we've had a chance to take a look at the data, what are my conclusions, discussion, and recommendations? So based on the results of this test, there is a pretty clear indication that wider tires do roll faster, at least at these velocities. One of the things that I think I found most interesting about performing this test by swapping the two tires and wheels back to back was the ability to feel how the narrow tires felt faster. Yet, each time, the narrow tires perform slower. Going into this test, I figured the narrow tires would be faster by a significant amount, even though back when I created the first two parts of this video series, I ran the numbers and my intuition still led me to believe otherwise. So in a way, the aim of this test, at least for me, was to see how much of a disadvantage there is to a wider, more comfortable tire. Now having completed this test, it is fascinating to see how the results actually turned out. So what are some possible explanations for these results? It's possible, as someone mentioned on an Instagram post, that there could be a bias on my part when performing this study. Perhaps I wanted the wider tires to be faster and somehow I managed to get those results. Although that might be true to some degree, the consistency of the heart rate data shows I was in some cases working less hard 
to go faster on the wider tires, particularly on the rough course. Some other possible variables that could have skewed the results include the higher spoke count on the 700C wheels, the fact that the 650B rear tire was set up tubeless, the bearings in the 650B hubs might actually be a little bit better, the gator skin tires may have a significantly higher rolling resistance compared to the wider, more uh, quote unquote supple tires. And therefore, the tire construction between these two tires is not equal. Another possibility is the extra weight of the 700C wheels added up to create a slightly slower rolling wheel and tire combination. So now that I have completed this first rough study and with the results being so close, I think a more precise test will be necessary. I think in future tests, we should include comparisons at a wider range of velocities, such as velocities you might see in an actual bike race, such as 25 to 30 miles an hour, or even faster. I think future tests should also include uh, similar tires in terms of tire construction so that there is no disparity between particular company rub the compounds that are used for different um, by different companies manufacturing tires. I think they should be of equal uh, sidewall construction and the manufacturing that goes into making them should be equal. I also think it would be interesting to see how changing the air pressure in both tires might affect the outcomes. So anyway, that's what I think, but let me know what you think. Do you think this test was totally bogus? Do you think I introduced a bunch of errors in the way I set up this experiment? Should there be more precise testing before we can make any meaningful conclusions? So, let me know what you think down in the comments, and until next time, have a great day.